कृपया ध्यान दीजिए द लैंग्वेज यूज ऑन द पॉडकास्ट मे नॉट बी फिट फॉर कंजम्पन वी वॉन्ट यू ट्रेड केयरफुली बट लिसन यार डोंट बी सो कंजर्वेटिव Welcome to Cyrus says uh, today we have one of the leading lights on well the world in large at large not just the uh, economy and a leading light for the carrying the torch for women and destroying uh, men like uh, all these horrible people in the studio the seven men that surround me the, the seven terrible indian men with skinny calves all of us without uh, one exception so let's meet her quickly it's uh, shaili chopra and the book is called sisterhood economy of by for women uh obvious take off on of the people for the people by the people instead of people just like she the people will come to that i'm running my mouth as usual shaili i talk a lot so hopefully you'll interrupt me and just uh, you just keep speaking the show has no format and uh, honestly there's nothing much we can do except discuss your greatness and your path to glory uh, which oh. i can say hmm that's easy yeah that's easy <laughs> I think this is the first audio show where there's video so i may as well show my book hey Please? you're showing off you dally girls all the same yaar देखो मेरे पास माँ है माँ आई लाइक द बॉम्बे बॉयज हु शो ऑफ दिस बुक रिमेम्बर टू सी द मेन इन द ब्रैकेट देयर हाँ व्हेन यू सेड ऑन बाय I only got I got the book at six thirty in the evening and I had to really race through it. So I haven't shown it to my daughter who's fifteen. So I'm very happy to I'll be taking it back after the show and giving it to her as a little present. She'll think I bought it. Ha ha. <laughs> Good old pop. But yeah, I'm not sure there's a bit in it about Indian men, deceitful and disgusting. Actually, not not so much. Um. So let's let's just talk about the book. Uh. What what? Should, how did it all start? Firstly, you you were on television. Oh yeah, that was a while ago, right? And then radio became so big, and then I said, "Okay, author, I have to have that tag. So now, what do I do? I scrambled for opportunities. I said, let me get out of television first. Uh, but yeah, I quit broadcast a while ago when I thought something was uh, brewing in the world of digital. I was very excited by a parallel universe where everybody was, and there I was, and said, "Sorry, television's not happening for me. I'm going to go where others are going to now." Sort of is that, is that a hint? Phone. Guys, I think that's a hint for me. I'll just write it down. Yeah, okay. Huh. Sorry, sorry. Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making the transition. So yeah, so I just quit uh, TV, what was called mainstream TV, and now move to what is now mainstream TV, which is the stuff that we are all on, which is digital. Um, the switch wasn't easy on day one, right? Because lived in Bombay, people like you and others, all friends and well wishers, well wishers would say. Who gets off television uh, at you know in your late twenties and starts in a world of digital? What's that? What's that? What's digital? And so, um, so I started that off with She the People, and then uh, from She the People over the last seven years, it went from what people called hobby to a flourishing business. Uh, took me a hard while to prove that to them, uh, but then of course from that came uh, all of these conversations that have been part of my life uh, over the last twenty-two years of my career, which is sisterhood. Uh, what it takes to get out there and get women contributing to the economy. So yeah, TV, TV goodbye and hello to the new. Sh- Shali, can we get the small elephant out of the room? So I, because you know I don't know about tags and labels, and some people don't like being called feminist. Uh, I keep saying this: my wife, my mother, my daughter, all very alpha female. So I don't have that in my in my life. I don't have the male experience of most of India. You know, chauvinistic males who uh, intimidate and bully, etc. For us, it's almost the opposite. So we're the true minority of India, the minority that's unseen and nobody knows about. So I'm really the wrong person here because I have absolutely no status in my house. But uh, where where does this start? The whole idea about this whole book is it's almost like a guide. I can see a, a young woman reading it. As, it's almost like a guide. It's like A B C D, and you go through almost. It's really well researched, and everything is covered. and i'm thinking about it's just amazing the, the kind of references you've taken the kind of people you've talked to across north south east west so all that i mean where 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 did it all come where's the idea coming from that you needed to do this so first i want you to know that this isn't a book just uh, that acts as a guide for women it actually is a damn good guide for men okay how to get it right um how to know what women are going through what girls are going through so i think other than giving this book to your daughter and getting some brownie points find other guys and other men around you and please give them this book i really need them to read it um hang on a hang you- on a minute sparish le lo beta <laughs> Uh, he's a he's a boy he's a young boy from Delhi, twenty two years old. The perfect target audience. He's not married yet. So before you spoil somebody's life, read the book. Yeah. Huh. 
you can spoil people's life after marriage also i'm just saying there are, there <laughs> are other ways there are other ways yeah. <laughs> yeah so so that's in the book so you know the book sort of came around because i felt that we um, we spent too much of our time defining what you call the elephant in the room what is feminism who's a feminist what does she look like does she wear pink does she become somebody who just takes a lathi and charge out uh, you know outside mill areas you know what who are these women what do they want from their life and i just wanted to normalize the conversation about how how regular women have regular dreams like anybody else and we just don't care to think about their dreams or what they want to do with their lives or why we we glorify the notion that you know women are the worst enemy of another woman but actually we have mums raising us why aren't they raising us better right we have half the country as female and the other half is raised by these women why are we still going wrong so it's a great insight into looking inwards for women as well as as they do try to fight the various battles about finding their rights going out there and speaking up getting onto shows like yours and various other things television pop culture bechari badass bitch syndrome which one yes, are you uh, chapter 6 reference immediately <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just trying to say we we put women in silos, right? You she walks into the room and like, अरे ये तो वो type है, बहनजी type है, cool type है, or don't mess with her type है. She looks too senior. But don't we do that hai. with men, uh, Shaili? Don't we do that with men also? Well, when somebody comes in the room, don't you say that he's conservative or whatever? Maybe the labels are little not clear. The labels you've used are very clear and blunt. Rather respectful, no conservative type है. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he looks like the guy who's the banker or the VC with the bonus. मतलब वो सब. Yeah. So, How what is it? Okay. Yeah. So there's no indignifying of the situation, is what you're saying. I get it. I get it totally. Yeah. While with the label is very coarse for the ladies, but there's also in the from what I look, I, I may have misread things. So please correct me. Uh, are women sometimes to blame for this as well because of uh, the SARS factor and sort of like a cycle that continues uh, uh, from one generation to the next to follow chauvinistic sort of lifestyles and practices, which are pushed by the senior alpha female in the house. actually it's created by the alpha male in the house or anywhere because for alpha males it's really important that everybody works to their game right and so who could be these people who play the game other men and women who can be converted to play their games which is why what happens is we forget about that element and then suddenly start talking about oh are women within to be blamed so actually you know the truth is we are all against the system of patriarchy where patriarchy is starting with a certain number of men and then it's getting passed to certain women who are unable to see it coming at them or unable to let's say move away from it because or enjoy the power them. exactly it gives them a false sense of power right but they don't remember that they are actually just pawns in the game of patriarchy and they are just passing this down for no reason and i feel like breaking that toxic cycle is what sisterhood is all about the entire book focuses on talking about the economy in a way we say look at all these x factors that play into what women can do when it comes to the economy and if we don't fix these x factors such as the alpha male the alpha female i'm using the term alpha just because yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. talking about it but i mean no definitive uh, term there but really the point is that we we just put women there to play the game the way they can't especially the ones who can't and i think that's really the majority of women i've interviewed here because we think that oh you know i'm south delhi i'm gurgaon i'm professional i'm this and that or south bombay how oh, this doesn't happen to me actually the book really proves length and breadth of the fact that whether you are a girl who is living outside in a village in karjat or whether you are somebody who is living in a south of some city or whether you are just a techie who is at the start of her first career struggling the hell out of her life we are all facing the same problem we have issues in being able to assert ourselves speak up or uh, deal with people who are questioning us and often just bury ourselves in others expectations of who we are let me just clarify to people listening and uh, or watching listening uh, that we're not trying to get the solutions in this one hour chat that they have to read the, read the book it's uh, called sisterhood economy and i'm going to just come to that word right now because that's what you're uh, sort of hinting at as well this empowerment which is part of the whole deal for anybody male female gorilla uh, the whole thing it, it begins with sort of your life and your career and your future and being your own sort of government for yourself which we which women relinquish uh, which some you know you give all these examples i'll just take one which uh, top of my head there's one i think uh, because my father in law was a uh, london school of economics and i know my daughter wants to go there so this lady is you know she raised uh, from a very rich family a big marwari family goes to london school of economics gets a degree is all right ready set go for taking on the corporate world and probably in 15 years heading something but uh, then is married off and her life is over 
that's it there's nothing more to her life but the domestic uh, situation which is not a bad thing either but she was raised for one thing so just take us back a little bit and just what 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 is what is there a right thing to do you know i won't talk about rights and um, rights i may talk about the wrongs but there's not your right and my right can be very different as you said at the start of this question we're not looking for solutions if i had solutions coming up in one hour i would have been with cyrus a uh, long time ago before i started writing this book talking about these the idea is to elucidate what is happening to all of us on a very everyday basis but what we do instead is benchmark ourselves against the world's hardest possible truth that we have to achieve like climbing the everest or something and say jab main wahan pahunchungi tab main ek successful woman hongi jab main ye karungi tab i'll become somebody somebody who's worth an achiever i'm just trying to break down these bizarre expectations and benchmarks both men and women put for women and therefore the system puts it for them right you have to either be a top notch ceo who's prim and proper and can't ever repeat a sari or her dress and her you know hair doesn't move from left to right and then you'll be a successful ceo then you'll have yourself in the same magazine 10 times over a decade this is not what success is and this is not what sisterhood economy is and if we want to be a 5 trillion dollar economy as a country half our population needs to contribute just as the other half let's not diss them because they don't wear black suits and show up in air conditioned cars we really need to fix that so to the example of this london school of economics right i mean it was such an eye opener uh, i understand there's like a close group around this that talks about these issues and this particular institute is only symptomatic of large number of many uh, ivy league colleges where women are sent by rich parents because they want to have a really well educated daughter nothing wrong with it great i mean if you can afford it you know send your child to the best but when she comes back she's told ab sab kuch ho gaya cv is looking good now time to get married and she's asking herself yeah i wanted to be an investment banker i wanted to run this startup i wanted to join this company what about that like that's not why we sent you we sent you so you could get a good degree feel that you went into a good education come back and get married and do what you need to do which is run the household have a family and education is the parents responsibility and they've done it right that's why but, but also the the other problem is that very often many of these girls or young ladies are actually pretty good at what they do it's not just that they good at academics oh. they probably have a have an eye for economics have an eye for you know entrepreneurship or whatever and that is just nipped in the bud so we are losing yes. out holistically as a country as a world uh, because you're letting talent go so much like a uh, yes. brain drain of 2020 uh, onwards which which i find really strange because i've grown up with a lot of girls i don't want to say this and we come from you know privileged what well, the white privilege version of is south subcontinental uh, asia and a lot of the girls i've grown up with don't work now and i'm stunned because they were so good at studies and so they were very motivated and they were very hard working very sincere for see that's the word that comes to mind between the two genders more sincere than the boys and then uh, all the talent is just not been discovered it just reached a precipice and disappeared that's it and i don't know I, I, again it's not like we have solutions or anything but I, it's a, it's a, it's a horrible waste that seems to happen to intellectual capital and ability and talent we are torn between women who want to work desperately don't have opportunities or access to many of these institutions would want to build careers and contribute in ways that is working at home but also working outside instead what you're saying is exactly what is beginning to happen among a lot of women and this is conditioning right because part of the conditioning is that are humne sab kuch kar liya bachcho ab tum use enjoy karo right so that's part of the other problem that much younger generation than us is facing but in our generation the problem is not been that women are lazy their parents are conditioning them to become that they don't want them to go out there and stand on their two feet and have a voice as an instagram post that i quote in the book says parents want you to be married before 21 because they are worried that after 21 you'll start having an opinion on what you want to do with your own life which is really problematic like you were talking about 2020 but this is 2022 and i at least know three women in the last two months who have quit their jobs at 20 because their parents don't want potential rishta people to think that their daughter works i don't get it you know i mean i just go, don't get the fact that it's one thing to want their child to work or one thing to have the you know demand for the economy to flourish but what about that girl her own agency padhai kariye kuch paise kamayegi will have a decision making power on herself instead whatever my husband gives me i will spend that money whatever i want i can ask for it imagine asking for it 99.9% women don't want to ask for anything 
you know, self worth, self esteem, self independence, all these things go out of the window. Uh, as a father of a young daughter, I'm, I'm thinking that you know this kind of book really, honestly, fathers should read first because uh, I, I, it's almost a criminal that you you nipping these people in the bud, nipping young girls in the bud when they have, even if they're not that talented. I'm saying give them a chance to fail. Let them go out there and do things or whatever. And as, as you said, stand on their own two feet. Coming back to the other idea, I want to borrow it for the government. Uh, maybe if they let children vote, that's one way the governments can stay in power. You get like six-year-olds to vote for you. Because you're a bit better. Yeah, Baba. Bas, ho gaya. And done. You got your vote. So I'm going to write that down. Jobs and not Ivy League colleges after which they have to come back and get married. I, I'm just, by the way, Shaili, I'm just saying that this is your idea to the government. The children should vote. <laughs> we are going to empower them. Yeah. So let's look at a couple of chapters from the book. Uh, first, let's begin with the woman's economy. I think you sort of uh, touched on that, which is basically you're talking about how 50% of the population should contribute as well. Uh, and if that happens, you can really see the uh, projections in terms of what we can achieve financially and fiscally uh, to another level altogether. Yeah. Uh, so let's go back a little bit and tell us about the woman's economy. So, you know, one of the pieces that I think really matters in that particular chapter is what I talk about when it comes to women being able to look at themselves beyond the statistic. You know, all the numbers out there I just mentioned at the start of the book, largely because we all like to get sucked in by numbers. Oh, sounds like a big opportunity. It, it sounds like you worked thing. hard as an author. Because the moment you see that, you say, oh God, this woman really works hard. Oh. Right. And at least proved my economics honors degree worth. It, it, <laughs> exactly. And it's how the pandemic worked. They just kept throwing data at you with lots of figures. You're never going to verify it. 80,000 people died in 16 minutes. Whatever. Boom, it's done. Yeah. yeah Not to say yeah. that you're lying. Huh. No, I tried not to. So anyway, but I, the numbers do that sometimes. Uh, that said, you know, I think the opportunity and the, the talk around what sisterhood economy wants to be is much bigger. The reason for that is that we, we look and analyze that factors here, which are so integral to the economy, but we don't bother about them. Why? Because they're not measurable. And actually, most of the stuff around women is not measurable, other than, of course, the housework and other uh, issues which are more concrete and visible to us, even though still not measurable. But think about the fact that when women go out there, you know, I was talking about uh, professionally and academic um, prowess. Women consider themselves less even before they've arrived at the college, arrived before, uh, you know, a, a, a large school where they're doing a very complicated subject like statistics honors or something. They're like, well, oh, I'm not sure this is for me. Girls don't do this. You know what I mean? We've just yeah. internalized this. Girls don't do this. Girls should be in X honors and Y honors and boys shouldn't be in English honors or history honors. Are who does that course? You know what I mean? We've done this. Similarly, when women think of themselves at the job, uh, look, you know, at jobs, they're like, I don't think I can ever be CEO. They don't even tell themselves that. They don't want to even wish it because, oh God, that's too far. It's so far that we have just like forgotten about it. It's light years away. If we start thinking that it's potentially possible, I mean, I can't even imagine the skates that these women are going to wear and speed at, you know, but we just don't. So part of the reason why Women's Economy was written as the first chapter is to kind of highlight how much we internalize about how economically worthless women are. Just completely worthless. What they do cannot be measured. What they do is not worth it. You know, all of that. This is the problem. Then we don't, we ourselves have part of it. And part of it is... Oh, it's a vicious cycle, the stereotyping. I'm thinking about it. How do you stop all this now? Because everything you're saying is correct. You know, the way we pigeonhole the ladies in this compartment, the men in that compartment, and they cannot cross into each other's compartments. Here's yeah, a big yeah. question here. On a personal level, how did you get in? How did you think about... It all makes sense now as you as you read the book and you understand and you sound very wise and all. But where did the ideas come from you that this is this jointed, this jointed society is out there? No, it just comes from talking to women. I think that's part of the problem that we've had. Uh, media as a whole in this country has never bothered to talk and understand things from the gender lens at all. We've always looked at it from the top. What does it mean for the lofty numbers of the economy? What does it mean for men, which is which, which, the biggest drivers of the Indian economy currently, technically in the organized labor market? Women are less than 25% of the labor force. This number is nearly 50% in the United States. And we're talking about numbers of uh, corporations that are registered and organized and large. I mean, you look at labor, you look at beauty parlors, you look at a lot of startups, you know, which are doing micro entrepreneurship. Women are not counted. The, if somebody is running a sewing machine, a machine and doing like whatever, 400 rupees worth of work a day in a village or in, 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 a, in a city, she's not counted because she's just running into the cash economy, which doesn't count. So a lot of these conversations with women, whether or not they were technically contributing to the economy, just made me realize that most of them at the core of it feel that they don't deserve what they can do. 
and what they don't know what they can do and who cares what they can do will somebody be interested in their story at all so this is this is what made me wonder that we think so badly of ourselves so low of us of ourselves that there is only an upside you know from here if we start cranking up the system a bit and seeing a 10% jump in how we think about ourselves i'm do- i'm very worried now that the government listening to the podcast is going to go after some women the ones you mentioned who are part of this cash economy not paying tax <laughs> so much for the entrepreneurship so catch them anyway. <laughs> 400 400 rupees ka vantar kitna hota hai 150 immediately per day i mean that's more vip presence everywhere more cars for them more uniforms for the police and the bodyguards be very careful okay uh, i want to get back to the curse of the the sasu ma thingy uh, because uh, you know the way indian culture is it's so strong across length and breadth of the country uh, the the living conditions because you uh, i think chapter what is it 5 Yeah, I think it's chapter five. We want to tell us. I mean, we can't take go through every single thing. I'm just trying to jump as much as we can. Yeah. Um, yeah. You want to tell us about that world? So Because that, that... was really interesting. No, um, Sasu Ma is the term that we have not just experienced. We've seen it on television. I mean, decades and decades of Indian television TRP mm-hmm. ratings have been hinged on what the Sasu Ma says, how she dresses, how she shows her eyes, and what she's going to do next. Right. So all of that is so fascinating. because when you start looking at it um with a lens of economics and you say what nonsense how can a uh, saas bahu piece be about economics right but think about it how many women recognize and how many men recognize that women spend a lot less time with their mums and nearly two thirds or three fourths more time with their mother in laws so how come we've not wow. paid more attention to what a mother in law can do in the life of a woman right i think that's really fundamentally one realization that hit me and then i started researching and stumbled upon this fascinating report by a world bank economist who talks about the importance of how a mother in law will determine whether that daughter in law will have the injections on time she will make sure that she has contraception or not how many kids does she need to have whether or not she can have her operation done after the extra kids are born in the quest of a guy I mean, the kind of decision making a mother-in-law does in a woman's life and a married woman's life is insane. But we only look at one aspect of it, which is the Lalita Pawar syndrome, right? I really think that there's a need for us to change it. The, not, not these the fact references, that Charlie. These references are for you and me. Ah, huh? they're also eighteen, nineteen-year-olds. So Lalita Pawar, this is. We'll have to put a picture. Okay, up. okay, oh. like yeah, I guess like any mother. Even Sasmi Kabi ma, ma and all these things are dated now. I don't know what the present ah, soap operas are. Huh? but yeah. i'm just hoping that uh, they'll get the the gist and i'm also hoping a lot of them will just choose not to get married because it's probably not what needs to be done no just tell them to read the bloody book yeah then they'll understand everything we're doing short form here everything is short form <laughs> yeah. in a conversation so this is the main book the book will explain all and the good thing about this book for people listening again is the examples are real they real examples that have been researched by shaili and the you identify women will identify with these examples i identify with the examples as well uh, because we all live in the same world it's not like we're outsiders to this world uh, yeah. sorry yeah so you were saying so i was just saying that the sasuma is an important factor in um, you know playing a constructive role which could of course be linked to how nicely we can try and project some of the good sasumas who are doing well <clears throat> i've seen for example i've talked a lot about manjri varde and um, you know uh, samira reddy uh, both of who are trying to break that uh, mother in law daughter in law stereotype and it's so wonderful because it talks about uh, samira looks hotter than her daughter in law yeah <laughs> <laughs> huh. right yeah right. so i'm saying this the space that women provide each other is a big factor around this part of the chapter on sasuma is closely linked to the role of mothers we and and this is one of the reasons why i think this book is doing so well because a lot of the times we are just putting such such big trophies on our mums right i mean we're not saying we don't need to but we're always saying the mothers are the best they are the best they have to be glorified and the mother in law is a shit that's not how the real world is the mothers are also raising us wrong they're screwing up in places and we're not able to either call it out or we're just blindsided by what what's happening because saas bhi kabhi ma thi i've got the latest show show i have understood your point yeah yeah casting please uh, write uh, into us yeah huh. but, but but girls don't have to have any of that right so mm. i'm just saying that's that's another part of the journey of a girl that i reflect on and a lot of women wrote to me and still do on instagram dms that you know it's so hard to first get this fixed at home before we can go and become what they call paraya dhan into somebody else's lives and i think that is to me one of the most important parts of the way sisterhood comes across is so relatable because 
we are going through this we are scared to say this because it doesn't look good yeah but uh, sadly we don't have that much time so i, I i'm going to choose a i'll just choose it out of obviously it'll be like luck okay whatever chapter we go to next i'm just going <laughs> to choose it oh, number 9 the big orgasm equality in the bed sheets i mean that you guys you saw that was completely I just didn't think cyrus would ask me anything from that yeah well i i want to learn it's is it too late to learn we all want to learn like Not you said I, I mistakenly said that it's for ladies to read first, but I, now as I think about it, what you said about men reading, it's probably compulsory for men to read, and hopefully women will read as well. Uh, yes. So when all my guy friends saw, uh, sheepishly told me they had read two chapters and they named some other chapter before they named this, I knew which one yeah. they had read first, right? Like, of course, actually, come on, you know the Indian male, yar. Uh, I was uh, very happy they read this first, and I hope they did something about it because. This or felt ashamed. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like this should be an eye-opening chapter for most people, including a debate I had with a guy who was interviewing me. I'm often trying to get more men on the shows to interview me about this book because I feel men need to read it. And one of them said, "I still don't think this chapter needs to be in this book, right?" Because we never think Why? that women are sexual beings, and that having desires and rights to pleasure and rights wow. to the best sheets are linked to your autonomy. So you realize okay. men are uncomfortable with this conversation. Men who only talk about women's asses and breasts and all that, and then suddenly when you ask them, I've noticed this all the time. If a woman asks a man about sexual in a clinical way, a sexual clinical sexual conversation, man is very uncomfortable generally. It's strange. Yeah, you just said no. Men talk about breasts and asses, but look at the but fact that women don't do that. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying the women don't do that. That's part of the chapter's problem, right? Well, what are we raising? Horrified here? if it's true. Most men, yeah. Like yeah, Spurs, right now, look at themselves without Spurs thinking and... of presenting themselves to somebody else. Where's yeah. our agency to ourselves? That you can sexualize men like that, women. I mean, uh, Rishi is just—he's having a heart attack. He's a young lad of 27, when he's a complete MCP. He says at home and proud. Yeah. So sorry. Let's quickly go go through what you exactly this where you sort of probe the issue threadbare. Yeah. Yeah, I spoke to a lot of women as I did for the rest of the book. And this question was something like, oh, nobody's ever asked us this question. So I'm like, I'm asking you this question. Tell me, do you really feel that somebody cares about your desire, your pleasure? Do you have the right to express? And in 80% of the cases, the answer was no. And what fascinated the hell out of me was that women in many parts of rural India, we, we think it's koi baat nahi karta. They were so clear. They were like, yeah, we know exactly what goes on. We know exactly what we need to do. Now, it's a different matter that they have not been exposed to the idea of that they can put their desires first. They can talk about what gives them pleasure, what doesn't, because that's a conversation that nobody has had with them, right? Certainly not expose them to those kind of things uh, in terms of like how to ask for it. But I felt that they were far more sexually more emancipated. Uh, than women in urban India. So, who like, uh, they, yeah. they were true to themselves, but they were still the the male had the was still yeah. the overlord in the in the situation. Okay. Yes. But, but because so, for so what, them, pleasure is not for themselves; it's for what but, uh, you present to somebody else. But let's talk to, about urban males who are going to read this book. Urban males are uncomfortable and awkward with this whole situation, and the but reason being are. because they're just so used to prioritizing themselves. Uh, are you listening to the show, boys? They're all yeah, quiet. Huh? The room has gone deadly close. quiet. Shelly, don't come here. <laughs> don't come here right now. You upset a lot of guys who think they're very liberal and left of center and egalitarian. We all know what you really are. Huh? All right. So, so coming out of this particular chapter, I remember having this chat with the team that does work work on health with me. And we were just discussing this is like half the problem. The reason men don't think that women's products on sexual wellness are important for the market is because most of them are not talking with their women. I can only speak for my own wife who says that never has she been satisfied. <laughs> Ever. She has no, no idea what it's like. And I, so I, I have to buy her the book and say, maybe this will help. Just read the book and feel better about yourself. <laughs> I, have this, you I have this feeling that this show is going to be edited and a clip will be inserted right here in the in the need to have the other side <laughs> spoken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the one male who's been battered. All right. Apparently, we have to go to break. Asha, you want to take a break? You're comfortable with the topic at exactly this point. So uh, my producer is purchasing. <laughs> Jenny doesn't uh, push me for a break, but because there's a hard stop, that's the real reason. But uh, what a point oh. to say, yeah. Huh? Indian male discussing his performance in bed and unable to now have a conversation. Where's your monologue now, boys? Where's the voice? Shaili's asking the big questions. Come on, chat now. Huh? Hey, yeah, yeah, body, yeah, body, yeah, body.
रही है क्या नहीं है सॉरी शैली दिस इज पॉडकास्ट इज बिकम सम रबिश गोइंग ऑन द साइड नाउ एंड वी जस्ट वेस्टिंग योर टाइम विल टेक अ क्विक ब्रेक एंड कम बैक एंड ट्राई एंड गेट एमए क्वेश्चंस एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट ईमेल्स एंड ऑफ कोर्स सिल्वरी विल जॉइन अस ही इज अ यंग मैन हु इज जस्ट आउट ऑफ अ रिलेशनशिप ही इज ब्रोकन हार्टेड बट ही इज बैक इन द सैडल अगेन एंड ही सेज दैट ही ऑलवेज पुट्स वुमेंस प्लेजर अबव हिज ओन प्लेजर Although he spends more time with his own pleasure, but that's because of social issues. All right, we'll take a break. Take a break. Hey, it's been another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. On Cyrus says, Cyrus and Abbas talk to Siddharth Alam Bayan, the popular host of The Bombay Journey. The trio discuss their favorite celebrity interactions and Siddharth's life as a child actor. On Postcards from Nowhere, Utsav takes us back in time, narrating stories of Punjab and Nagaland during the era of the Mahabharat. On Smarter with Sits, Darth explains the reasons behind the success of podcaster Chris Williamson. And on Storytellers and Storytellers, Vineet talks to Divay Agarwal, the brain behind popular YouTube channel Kuni Monday. Divay discusses his inspiration behind creating spooky content and building a horror community. Once again, don't forget to visit our merch store on ivmpodcast.com. We have some exciting stuff for you. Also, do follow us on social media. We are IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Do remember to spread the word about the shows you're listening to. It would be great if you can rate and review them wherever you're listening to them. You can also check out all our shows on YouTube. Wishing you a very happy Diwali. And finally, we would like to thank our sponsors this week. Bumble heads up for Tales Kotak Privy League program and HDFC Mutual Fund. Thanks for making this possible. Okay, we're back after that long break. Shaili is still with us. The book, let me remind you, is called The Sisterhood uh, Economy of by for women. Uh, and and of course the women there's men in brackets and w outside it. Let me yeah. get the camera right there it is. Yeah. All right, please go and buy the book. Again a book you must have. I wrongly said it's for all ladies but it's for everybody. male female and lgbtq and everybody else let's not you know yes. this is we're not going to you know cut anybody off because it goes beyond gender after some time it's all about empowering yourself and making sure if i could uh, please correct me again empowering yourself and making sure that you call the shots in your life i, I think that that's the key if if one had to do a one liner from the whole thing yeah. and once you're a parent you understand that because i can't believe generations of parents only whatever the sons because the, just taking for granted the woman will be looked after you know the daughter will be looked after and yeah. and that's the thing she's addressed in the book uh, a lot Uh, Shaili, we've we've got this young man who was Hi. a bit of an MCP till he read morning. the book, and he changed completely. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Okay, still. I, I just found out about uh, women orgasms. <laughs> you really? <laughs> yeah. No, hold on, brother. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. I'm going to write the podcast. So, so what's happened? The Bombay guys say they're only reading chapter yeah. nine. I have to warn you, yeah. they're reading chapter nine. It's all they're getting out of it. You know, understanding. Oh, guys, it can be big also. <laughs> <laughs> economy, she economy, nahi hai isme. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, Shelly, you had also mentioned about how the media actually talks about, or lack thereof, how they don't talk about it properly, how they don't talk about, say, women issues or women. Uh, or portray it properly. Portray them properly. So, what needs to change then, according to you? Like, what should they be doing different? A Very lot. I'll give you an example. Let's talk numbers. Out of a thousand stories, eight uh, hundred are focused on Bollywood, governments, and cricket. The balance two yeah. hundred have yeah. everything else, including women. So we are just so busy, therefore, reporting only, for example, on crime and rape, which is a very important thing to report on. We don't report on successful stories of women other than yeah. the five the top magazines. We don't report on women who are happy and enjoying a party. Oh, which women enjoy a party? Can we show that? We yeah, just don't absolutely. understand that we can show women in other light. Or oh, women ogling at Sparsh at Carter Road every day. They ogle at him. He's completely uncomfortable about that because they're all in the eighties. These old bunch of really old ladies. But what the hell? You know, they're women too. I mean, he was asking for the massage that, thing, no? Huh? Yeah, we can show stuff like that. Women staring at men. How is yeah. that even possible? You know, should we? <laughs> yeah. Women have sexual thoughts about <laughs> their lives on the streets, walking the streets, yeah. and seeing. Mere piche I mean, no aurat nahi aa rahi hai. Yeah, if I I feel that if women don't stare at me, one second, one they second, they shouldn't be staring at anyone. She's got my <laughs> fantasies <laughs> <laughs> spot on, huh? <laughs> I'm walking yeah. the streets, and there's a girl <laughs> following me, and I'm wondering if she's talking wow. me. Ah, oh, that's <laughs> that's my Monday evenings. Nice. Yeah. Uh, this but, is the uh, difference. You see it as fantasy. Women are stuck with fear. Yeah, this is what we need to change. Come on, men, you get better. Don't follow us. Yeah. Well, yeah. Shaili, there are women and there are women. You know, I mean, there are men and there are men. But uh, uh, let's go to eleven for a second because I think that the question gets the answer somewhat in that. Not there's no answer. Technology can change the game. You want to take us through that a little bit? 
Yeah, the reason I put that in is because I think women in the last few years have seen that they can really get out of their world by getting in to a laptop or a phone. And they uh, seem to find both sisterhood and strength in what they can do with their lives. There are opportunities, there's access, and there's an availability of potential jobs that they can do while sitting at home without rocking all their boats at the same time. You know, we started this show by talking about what is feminism, and no point do we say that, you know, feminism is about leaving everything at home and just going and trying to build a new life if that's not something you can do. If your circumstances are hard, try navigate them rather than put yourself through so many variables that you can't get anything in place. So I think a lot of women who are stuck with circumstances that they need to navigate, like, you know, having children, you can't just leave your children and walk off. You're having difficult marriages. You still can't do that. I mean, much that women would love to, but they, sometimes they can't. What can they do? Can they use technology to step out of their world in some way? Can they become financially independent? Can they find that you know, sisterhood to have conversations? Could they find somebody else going through a similar moment and seek answers to their own situation? So I think technology really does have many answers, including, for that matter, financial technology now gives them the opportunity to earn in a way that they can also spend digitally so you don't have to hide your cash under your petticoats and, you know, like from, from families and husbands and Uncles and so aunts. is this is this somewhat going to the narrative of victim versus the victor thingy that you can look at it you know look at it more like how to conquer rather than how to you know how the world sucks I never think women are uh, victimizing themselves. Their circumstances are. That's why I look beyond that binary of victim versus the victor because that's not really how things are. Oh, Charlie, I have spoken to friends of mine who, who tell me how frustrated and unhappy they are and that they wish they had carried on with their careers when you go back in life and think that we discussed at the crossroads at 2021 when they make that jump forward with everything going for them and they don't do that. And at 37, they're looking back and thinking, what the hell? You know, this is boring. The kids are almost grown up now. What do I do? And there's also yeah. this other section, if I'm not wrong, where... Uh, so they'll be career women, right? But their uh ghar pe, like their saas bahu or whatever their saas or their uh, in-laws and all will still expect ke after a full day of work, you still have to come back home and then make food for me and then serve me food yeah. and all that thing. So that is also like yes. a like a double standard that shouldn't exist. Cause um, yeah, but I think there are two parts to that standard. One is what they expect of us, and the other is the fact that a lot of women give in. I really encourage hmm. women that who can try not to give in, they shouldn't give in. And I've actually given my own personal examples there that when I got married, I said, I'm not giving in to anything that is expected of me because I have to now be a bahu, which is a certain definition, right? Which is why I have a brilliant relationship with my in-laws. I really don't listen. Also, you, in, you introduce your in-laws to Zomato. Which, you know, I mean, you know, they <laughs> yeah. solved everything. <laughs> Try <laughs> now. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Technology plays a role, as I've been there talking you go. about. There you go. You win again. <laughs> yeah. All right. Do um, you have any other questions? Or should we take the emails? Let's go to some. Okay, yeah, we'll go emails. to the emails that yep. we have right now. Um, uh, hopefully from both genders. Huh? I haven't checked. Yeah, Yeah, we have uh, okay. from both genders. Yeah. All right. The first one comes in from uh, Gauri Sinha, who asks, uh, uh, she says, uh, Hi, Saris and Shaili. Shaili, you worked in broadcasting as well and now run your own online platform and business, She the People. Making it in broadcasting versus on a social platform. What are the, some of the bigger differences that you have noticed in both of those? Universes? Okay, so now this is what we haven't uh, discussed because as we have little time, uh, your personal story. Okay, we've not even got into that because we're just talking about the book. So please. Yeah. No, I think it was really big for me to, um, when I stepped out of broadcast, I told myself that here is a brand who's leaving the broadcast space and trying to build something brand new. Can I reverse this? Can I not be the brand of my next journey? Can my brand be the brand of my next journey? Which is when She The People started. Um, I literally went sort of underground saying, let's build She The People. Let's see what it can push boundaries with. And today, honestly, the 3.2 million followers it has or the 20 million eyeballs it gets a month, they wow. don't know Shelly. They know she, the people. And I think that for me is like huge. I, I recently went for some festivities in the middle of a Pujo Pandal. I had three women who came up to me and said, are you she, the people? I've is Pujo Pandal the right pronunciation? I'm a little worried. <laughs> go on, go on, go on. So, so for me, that was a big deal to, um, to have at least made that transition. How do you build a brand outside of your own self and build it on social media? where everyone really can uh, call you out the way they want to Absolutely. and yet celebrate. You know, somebody said this from within uh, my extended family and I never thought of this. She said, before we had She the People, I didn't know other women were going through what I was. 
Wow. Is that come on. That's powerful. Of course, you know that other women also feel trapped. Uh, I'm talking about you spe- do. specifically our society. And who puts words onto what they think? Who puts words on? Or, in, or Insta makes them lie. Tell you how happy everybody is. Picture yeah. of sunset, yeah, uh, of walking a dog, whatever. Me and my happy husband, 12th anniversary, you know, all that rubbish. Who yeah, wants to be married 12 years? Go somewhere else to find which other sisters are facing this. Yeah. That's the power. Yeah. Think but now you've power. screwed up my mind completely because you're talking about the brand is separate from you. You know, it's all firstly we sound arrogant. Secondly, how arrogant are we? Because we have Cyrus as this as the name. Yeah, you know right. what I mean. <laughs> sure. She the people. So her brand is a, a female legacy that she wants to leave yeah. behind. And here we just talk about ourselves. Cyrus, Cyrus. That's the whole male female divide. Yeah, okay. Male ego and females uh, far more you know yeah. holistic yeah. in their approach. Uh, all right, okay. next one. Next one. Um, Next one comes from Nishant Johar, who says, uh, Hey Cyrus, what's happening? Big fan of the show. He says, uh, I can't believe I'm typing this while wearing one of the Cyrus Says Big Boomer Energy t-shirts. Which is what I'm wearing. Which is what you're wearing yeah. also. This is crazy. Uh, uh, Sh- says, Firstly, Shali, is it Shali or Shaili? I heard Shaili. you. Sh- no, she's pronouncing it Shaili. Shaili. It's not Shaili. It's Shaili. No. Hey, so everybody, as a bloody Punjabi, you but should know this. Shaili no? is, uh, is another pronunciation of the we word. We are presuming right? it's a cut of Shalini or something. It's not. Huh. Sorry? Sorry? No, no. Sorry? No, he's Panju, so uh, I'm just uh, yeah. presuming that he should know how to pronounce the name, right? If it's a fairly common name, but it's not actually. I mean, yeah. it's so uh, is it? It's not, not. at all. And, and, yeah. and Shaili is the name. There's no Shalini or Shaili something, and then it becomes Shaili. No. Cyrus, don't start me on that one. I'll be putting an Instagram post about when people like Cyrus call me Shalini. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just. I love trying to figure out names, especially when they hit you and they're not like Pooja Shweta, or whatever. So you know, no. you're trying to figure it out. But yeah. 89 out of 100 people call me Shalini. You must have intimidated many men who can't see your name and are feeling worried to pronounce it wrong. Especially those who have yeah. crushes on you when, when they were young and stuff. I can imagine them going like... Uh, Why? Because when I am young. Come on. Oh, okay. Sorry. You're still young. You're still young. Yeah, then. Chapter 7. Learn how to talk to women. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, even when you're growing up. It's okay. <laughs> no, no. You write another book for men. Okay, just for men. I know this is also for men, but we need uh, different tuitions. Uh, sorry, right, so yeah. he was saying? Uh, next one, chapter yeah. 9 all the way. Chapter huh. 9 to my heart. Yeah. I, I, I read it and I agreed completitely. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Nishan Johar says, uh, uh, yes, big fan. He says, uh, here's my question to you and the guest. What did success mean to you earlier in life, say at the age of 20? And what does it mean to you now at this point in your life? Do you ever wonder how many things you achieved that you wanted to at age 20? Well, I won a darts competition at 20. Uh, but it was only huh. a Ghat Cooper one road. So I don't know if that counts, but uh, let's go to the former, formerly known as Shaili, who is now Shaili. <laughs> Shaili. Uh, uh, did at twenty, you weren't on telly yet. Shaili, yeah. Shaili no, on telly. Shaili on telly. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Yeah, huh. at, at, at twenty, getting a job was success. Okay. Ah, it was really hard. Yeah. Academically, started. were you one of those successful girls? You oh. know the stereotype of super student. No, I had to work the shit out of my life in order to pay my school fees, college fees. But for me, um, school and oh. oh, you did school and college. Yeah. The girls were toppers always. It was like the th- one, two, three, four. There was no, the I wasn't a topper there. in college. Actually, I did not want to be a topper. There was just too much hard work, and it's also you know I'm not big on benchmarks. I don't like this guy class my first hour, first venture, and all that. I wanted to have fun, so I worked throughout college and earned some money and chilled out a little bit. But um, yeah, I did land up my first job uh, after learning journalism from the BBC and the Hindu at the Asian College. That was not my the same, job. not the same school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's but similar. Yeah. yeah, and Ram also has an accent. If you heard him speak English, it sounds like a guy from uh, yes, IT. yes, hmm. right. He wasn't our English teacher, thankfully, though. Uh, So, yeah, anyway. So, yeah, no, success has meant different things for me at different points. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I do have, um, uh, I have a different success goal for every decade of my life. So, 20s was TV mein kuch karlo. 30s was Mm -hmm. let's build Chi the people. I have just turned 40. So, I am now building Gaitri.com, which is focused on women's health and sexual health. Uh, Men must visit the website to know what their wives, girlfriends, partners are going through. Don't go through. (laughs) And don't go through. When it comes to sexual health. (laughs) And don't go through. Uh, In the 50s, I think I'll learn Kathak. Uh, yeah, I'm learning the drums now, but I think it'll take me some time to Yeah, perform. it says so. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so I'll, oh, yeah. I'll you go for an Indian classical perform. recital and there's a percussion is going berserk. <laughs> Why not? Why yeah. not? So when did you start with uh, Gayatri? Uh, so I literally started Gayatri about eight months ago. And it's a product of what women actually the people have talked about. 
that was also part of the journey of sisterhood talking to women about health and how they land up at doctors for the first time when they have babies until then they could perhaps almost die in the loo bleeding the hell out but nobody will reach out to them or they will not reach out to a doctor to go and solve for it so it's a uh, yeah joke okay, karan sorry huh. it's a preventive health platform for women to say yes preventive health matters don't land up at the doctor when everything is done upon and on your in your spare time can you also train the miss indias for question answers i feel once they read your book they'll be empowered no because sometimes they look empty and shallow because it's all this loud sounding posturing and you know yeah, whatever yeah. and they ask like but impossible it, it, question like how would a regular person know the question they all, uh, and they always questions. end the start the answer with thank you for that question yeah that's like i've that's given that's you a plot of land or something you know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's a stupid question about uh, how will you solve the world's problems or something like that. thank you for that question yeah first i will make that's sure that question. all pigeons will what be what is fed. the next question <laughs> Oh, what is the next year? Yes, that's true. That's a great pitch for me. Thanks, Cyrus. Especially since you're in Bombay and everyone in Bombay is into Miss India's etc. Especially what does the that pack. mean? <laughs> is making it's us all out to be shallow. <laughs> like that's, so, that's, female that's aspiration. Awesome. No, no, female that's, aspiration. You're saying London school. That's the hub of where all of this plays out. And I really want the level of vanity obsession that sometimes I think. Um, sometimes i think bombay mm. leads to because of his film industry connection needs to Absolutely. cut down yeah. if you're trying to call bombay shallow you're right so don't you mince your words i love this city yeah. it's not shallow but it's yep, just shallow the bad shallow, ass bitch shall- 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 shallow shallow come on <laughs> <laughs> but okay. no i'm just i'm just thinking that yeah. uh, men men are really strange that way but uh, women aspire to Uh, economic glory now and hopefully will be inspired not just by you but people like you all across the world and men aspire to meeting miss indias that's not changing no yeah, oh true. she's miss india <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's horrible the label people don't understand i think we're miss india you should just run away for two years uh right sorry the next one you think the mr the title mr india nobody cares a, yeah <laughs> nobody cares think, think Dude, name india. one guy exactly. ask me thousand dms a day and she the people we will start yeah. he the people you are and oh. men I'm um, even be Mr. This and Mr. That. I'm dealing with it. I don't hell? know how many times a day I get this. Yeah. Did you not explain to him that he the people has been tried for many years and that she the people I, is the I concept that's now which status quo is called he the people. We need she the people to pay attention to women, but they don't. I think it. nothing is funnier than a really chauvinistic man who thinks he's not. Yeah, <laughs> correct, correct. Yeah. Ah, I believe I'm not trying to be equal. Yeah. Alright, chai pilao, man. Chut. Next one. Next one. Next one comes from Vedhi Shah, who says. Uh, Hey Saras and Shaili, I have been following both of you, both of you for years. But I must say, the two of you seem like you're almost poles apart. Saras with his brash and self-deprecating sense of humor, and Shaili with her outspoken, badass, fearless persona. It would re- bring me great joy if you guys could come to an agreement as to three things right now. Number one, the best city in India. Number oh. two, the biggest frustration in life, and number three, your biggest pet peeve during the pandemic. So, number one, the best city in India. If Bombay. You, if you, Bombay. Two, if we can come to an agreement. Bombay. Oh God, I, I'm just so angry with this VIP movement. <laughs> so, I can't bear it. Yeah, the way they just uh, are posturing all these morons who nothing. Bombay Chai is my favorite. I can sit in that taxi with pink lights alone at yeah. three in the morning. Kya life hai? Bombay Chai is great. Yes, but Bombay. I mean, that's the reason. But that's not from Bombay. Um, butter chicken is great in Peshawar. From... I don't want to live there. I think it's more of a Goan delicacy though than a Bombay well, delicacy. Even though it's called Bombay. The most important part was what I do after I eat the Bombay Chai. Sit in taxi three in the morning. Go around. Oh, like, okay. Sit. Talk about a full social life, Shelly. <laughs> life was hard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but talk about a social life that only happens in Bombay, and you can't do this in Delhi because you're so scared. Damn well, who'll come and stalk you, and what will happen to your life? Boys like Spurs, we'll be boys like Spurs. We were walking around with their guitars. Uh, and the long hair and thinking he's really bola but in delhi you're not bola you're dangerous yeah <laughs> uh, i would go with bangalore in the 90s or mumbai in the 80s uh, these two options but definitely not mumbai i'm not to... born uh, in the first part of your life so not... <laughs> <laughs> it's called documentary take a look at my documentary and explain but, everything but the criteria is that you both have to come to an agreement so now you have to okay, argue I'll... for bangalore or shelia so argue for bangalore But, she reminds uh, me uh, her vibe reminds me very much of the three women in my life they're very powerful <laughs> and fierce and the best thing to do is accept defeat fast because you're never winning okay. so i will just go with whatever she says uh, yeah, mumbai's you, best <laughs> yeah uh, okay gun yeah. to the head i guess go ek nath sinde <laughs> yeah. i mean i would i don't mind 3 am alone in the taxi i just don't oh, yeah. want those guys out of my malwa hill area i just huh. want them out can you send them to delhi can they run maharashtra from delhi anyway actually they do <laughs> all right next one is the biggest frustration in life 
Oh, could come to an agreement on the biggest frustration in your lives. I've written I... a book about it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, true. Well, my biggest frustration uh, basically is Indian wearing long pants. Indian men. I don't understand why they do that. It's just too hot, and I I don't see the sense unless you have a certain protocol, like you know, you're serving a certain job or sector where you really need it. It just makes no sense. Like, why is Parish in long pants? Are you in long pants? Why are you in long, long pants? I... You've come to the podcast. You're sitting in a studio. You're two monkeys. But Cyrus, a show. you're the only one in the office with in, in shorts. <laughs> Everyone is wearing full pants. That's why Indians so suck. Enormous. My book is called Indian Suck. It's uh, <laughs> it's gender parity. Uh, everybody, you know. I mean, why, why, why? Come on. It's too hot. Oh. It's a tropical country. Okay. We're going to Kasoli. In fact, uh, I'll be meeting you on Friday as well. Oh, apparently, right. you're, you're at yeah. you're at four. We're at two. And they've sent a little memo saying, you know, it's 15 degrees or whatever. Wear appropriate clothing. I was like, are you mad? I want to come <laughs> naked. I want to bank that cold. I want to stand around and feel cold for five minutes. I want to come back here to the the October heat. That's going to yeah. now. Now we're going to be next month in Mumbai is horrible. You and your taxi driver suck. Do not come here. Okay, it's going to be so hot in October, November. Yeah. And then low tide. Oh God, help us. Yeah, but Oof, still. Ouch. But we will come to an agreement. Yeah. So we agree. Long pants. So is that long? Is long, long pants short, are the biggest frustration in life. Yes. Yes. She's yeah, I think book. I would say that women need to wear a lot less. Yeah, or rather, wear what they want. They should always wear what they want. Men too. Just wear what you want. Plus, we Other... all want to wear a lot less. Okay, we're tired of wearing so much. Really? Yeah, God. we agree. Now my next frustration is shaving, man. What if you keep shaving all the time? Another six, seven minutes of your life for nothing. Uh, shave it looks yeah. bad. We went to funeral. Shave it looks bad. Team. We have to shave a lot all the time. Yeah. yeah. Don't oh, worry. No. Ask me. As you age, women shave as much as men. It's true. Yeah. It's not. It's not like a mean thing yeah. to say. It's true. And all. they're more careful about that than we are. You know. Except I just don't want somebody peddling me a pink razor for eight times more money. Simple. Yeah. What? What's this pink razor thing? Is it a better yeah. razor? Not at all. It's much worse. Uh, this costs ten I, times more. I just use Aisha's razors. I don't bother, and then I try to clean it because if she finds hair on it, she knows I've used it. Yeah. So I have to clean it oh. after that because the male hair, the female hair, is different. You know what's left, the residue hair. Okay. Yeah, and then she gets really angry. Uh -huh. Then she may use the razor not to shave. Oh my god! All right, all right. Third and the last one was your biggest pet peeve during the pandemic. Oh. The the fear, paranoia, the madness, just how people became so cowardly. The yeah. sissification of India. They start, started abandoning pet animals, yeah. Huh? Pet animals, animals, the way they treated everybody, the way yeah. they, the, the 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 genocide of those forty crore people walking the streets of India. Our sound is suddenly gone for a toss. Uh, oh, the government is listening because this was like criticism. Wait, Shaili, can you still hear us? Because Shaili, can hear us? Lost audio. Oh, you could. Tell you. Okay, Delhi is back. safe. Yeah. Maharashtra government got angry with us. Yeah. All right, yeah. The Shiv Sena part two or three faction part of it, not the whole thing. Yeah. So right. for for me, that whole experience worldwide, not just India, just the fear, paranoia, and the way people were so in a hurry mm. to get more scared and and send the fear to you, the building WhatsApps, the chats. Oh God, what a sissy world it became. A bunch of bloody sissies. Honestly, I can't tell you. Uh, don't want to sound like Andrew Tate, but honestly, it was just too much. Uh, yes, right. let's go over to the champion. She'll give a more educated answer. No, no, I don't think it's about an educated answer at all. I think just just not being able to get out of a space that you didn't want to be in. It was as simple as that, right? It could be as small as the box that you guys are sitting in. But did you feel that sometimes people were actually happy to be uh, scared? They were almost in a hurry to send bad news and hurry to embrace. Let's wear more masks. Let's hide more. Let's not do anything. Let's die. Everyone, our... everyone took out that bharas. I wanted to be class monitor when I was young, but I couldn't. So here I am. One day I came. I came home because we used to go to the studios. Uh, new studios were open. I came back home and I found fruit at the near the lift in the building. And I said, "No, uh, sir, chemala ka fal hai." I said, "But what, what does that mean?" So apparently he was airing it for six hours. It was somewhere oh. they came up with. Do you remember this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Air the fruit. Definitely something I got really. They had a time. <laughs> they, they, they had research. They had six hours. Your stuff and then putting it all outside. When somebody I saw put a bottle of beer outside, I was thinking, "This is sunning here." <laughs> <laughs> Look at the priorities. That guy went for beer. These guys went for fruit. Look at the difference. Yeah, that's true. I won't tell you. But people were spraying disinfectant on their food and all, huh? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and they're wondering why the relatives are dying. I mean, ridiculous. <laughs> also, the flies. Also, the flies. Good news, bad news. Couldn't do with a sanitized life the way it was. It's just impossible. Yeah. And where is it gone? How much people washing their hands? You know, how many times Kunal would wash his hands when we entered the studio. He'd wash the mic. He'd wash every. It was just yeah, rubbish. Yeah, the mic is not going to kill you. Oh God! It was just. I can't. Don't. Never again. Next time there's a pandemic, I'm pulling out my gun and shooting people. I'm like, why are you worried? Die now. Bang. 
How soon do you think we hit a new pandemic? I want it by Wednesday. मैंने order किया Amazon पे देखता हूँ delivery आएगा या नहीं? We don't know. Please, no pandemic till everyone's bought out my book. Okay. Hey, hey, then I'll... read more. Yeah, read more. Read reading sales went up. Our, our podcast went up. Everyone yeah. dying for the next pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> People have started going to stage shows. Yeah, disgusting. <laughs> All right. Oh, we have to stop. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Shelly. Shelly. It's not Shelly. Shelly. It's, it's, it's no. It's Shelly. The way she's saying it. Yeah, Sh- I'm, Sh- I'm saying the same thing. You're saying Shy. No, I'm saying Shelly. It's the end of the show. You don't Shelly. know the name of the person. Shelly. I'm saying it right. No. You say Miss Chopra. Okay. Uh, yes. Miss simple. Chopra. Oh God. Do you like that? Do you like that? Do you like Auntie? I hate Auntie. I mean, not Auntie. Who but... likes Auntie? I mean, not Auntie. <laughs> auntie is Auntie is rare, but it has happened. Sparks don't love. It has happened. <laughs> Huh? Last question. Do you like? Incorrect if I say I don't like auntie, but yeah, I don't think I've gotten there. Yeah, but what's your reaction when they say auntie? Oh, you know, ma'am also is a little too stiff. Yeah. I say I'm wearing earplugs and listening to Ritwiz. Wow. <laughs> That's authentic version, yeah, yeah. pirated. Version. All right. Listen, the book is called as we say, bye to Shelley. uh it's sisterhood economy i'll try and get it right down here's the camera yeah, there you go sisterhood economy please read it um it's it'll open your eyes let's not say solutions that's a very strong word it'll open your yeah. eyes to the experience that i i think we should get both males and females of this generation and the next you know it's never too late also for those people who are feeling frustrated at 40 yeah. read this it's never too late you might be the next great entrepreneur who knows right absolutely yeah or you could just be the woman you wanted to be Or the man you wanted to become. You, you <laughs> Sorry, read you my thoughts. Over your yeah. She immediately yeah. knows me so well. <laughs> <laughs> Auntie Cyrus, yeah. Say bye for all of us. Yeah. All right. Thank See you. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you so much for watching the show. First, let me verify if anyone's left. Okay. Not sure. Can't tell. Lighting is not good. But you know the drill. It's very simple. Like and subscribe. We need that, guys. I'm desperate for it. I've just been told we don't get like and subscribe by November 31st, which doesn't exist because it's not there in the month. Uh, there'll be trouble. So please like and subscribe as quickly as possible, and that's all we have time for. And leave your comments, your likable, lovable, laughable comments. Anything you want to say, criticize us, say anything you want. We don't care because we don't really read them. But please, no, I'm kidding. We do.